What up, what up, what up, back at it again, Real Fans Podcast here on a sweltering June, end of June day. I'm your boy, Gabe. That's Julian. Julian, say what's up to the people. What's up, people? What's up? It's hot over there? You're doing folded hands. Namaste, you're doing namaste. Namaste. I gotta gotta meditate before we start. (laughs) (laughs) I had to like, Musaw and Kate for these these heated uh, topics, but it's hot over there, Gabe? It's hot as hell. Um, but it's also hot in South Florida. We'll get to that later. We're going to talk about some NBA news. A lot of NBA news going on. We're in the first day of free agency. Uh, but uh, we're going to start off with the NFL because the NFL never stops making news. We haven't seen a game play since the Super Bowl. And the NFL is making news. So, Julian, what do you got? What, what, what's the uh, biggest story coming out of the NFL uh, mm-hmm. right here? R- right now, a big contract signed. Probably the first time we've heard of a contract getting signed in a in a minute. It's been a minute since we've heard anything. But... Terry McLaurin for the Washington Commanders, which still got to get used to that, just signed a three-year, $71 million contract extension with Washington. Um, this is, will make him top five highest paid receiver in the league. Um, great for him. Glad that he's getting his uh, his money. It's probably the only good news Commander fans have because, you know, the, the whole the whole uh, owner and everything with all the, I don't know, there's a whole lot of shit. I don't really know too much about it, but I know there's a lot of shit going on with uh, <laughs> with Dan Snyder and all them. And will he actually be an owner or there's, not? There's congressional hearings and shit, you know. There's the stuff in the workplace, congressional hearings, uh, you know, there's Daniel Snyder. I'm pretty sure he was on the outside. There was a vote. I guess, I, think, I guess there was like a soft vote. People were calling other owners, you know, to see possibly if he can get them kicked out. But as far as the product on the field, Terry McLaurin uh, gets an extension. I don't know. How do you, how you feel about Terry McLaurin getting an extension? Do you think he's like worth it? Do you think he's the top receiver in the league? Um, He is a good receiver. I don't think he's reached his potential yet. And obviously – so does Washington feels the same way. Like, you know, lock him up now while you can um, before that price tag could potentially get higher. Um, but I mean, we've seen this time and time again, like with the uh, salary cap raising every single year, this contract's not going to seem as big as it will three years from now, most likely. And uh, yeah, I mean, he he's a talented uh, wide receiver so far. He hasn't really had a true quarterback throwing to him. So obviously like there's so much more untapped potential that he has with everything that he's shown with the quarterback carousel that he's had to deal with, with Dwayne Haskins and Alex Smith and Ryan Fitzpatrick, uh, Taylor Heineke. Now he might have his best quarterback when Carson Wentz. We'll see if Carson Wentz, see if Carson Wentz project two what 3.0 will work out again over there in Washington 4.0 but I mean yeah I I like him Uh, it was somebody that I think he was on the trading block for a little bit there I remember a lot of people were talking about him um, possibly moving but I mean Washington needs weapons they got some decent pieces on the offensive side of the ball their defense is pretty solid they got a really solid defense um but yeah, they just need to they need to straighten things out, and hopefully Carson Wentz can be their guy for them, or at least be better. I think he will be better than what they had last year. Um, but yeah, they're they're definitely banking on potential with him for sure. I mean, what do you think? I mean, I think I think he's like a good uh, good receiver. I think he's been productive so far. You know, the guy is only uh, he's twenty six, going to be twenty seven next year, um, and he's been productive. He has at least nine hundred yards a season uh, with uh, you know four or five, seven uh, touchdowns. So, I mean, and he rather had a lot of help. So like he's been productive exactly without, you know, the quarterback help. And uh, so I think, I think he's solid. Like, am I going to say like, he's um, maybe the top five, maybe not, but maybe he's top 10, top 15. Like he's, he's a good receiver. I would, I would love to have him on my team. Like if he was, if he was available, I would love to have him on my team. And he's still generally young. I mean, 26 year old is not that old in the league. And when you get to that's the, prime, yeah. that's prime. Yeah. That's right out so, of your first um, contract. Yeah, I think it's good, you know, to secure him, uh, get that extension and, and secure him on your team because, you know, he's going to be hopefully a, a, a steady player, like a fast. He's going to give you your regular statistics. So he's been productive so far. He's only been in the league, you know, what, three years? And he's going into his fourth year. So, I mean, I I mean, I, I would like him. I would like him on the team. I'm not going to yeah. say, like, he's the GOAT. He's the greatest receiver I've ever seen in my life. But, you know, he's, he's still a good uh, NFL player. You would definitely want him on your team. Yeah, and I also don't even really know like what the details are, like how much is guaranteed, how much is 
per year, what his salary is going to be looking like. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's only a three year extension. It's not super long. So, I mean, if it ends up not working out for him or if he wants to leave, I mean, he'll be leaving at 29 years old. Well, I guess it'd be four years, including because it's three year yeah. extension. So about 30 years old, he has, if he stays productive, he can cash in another big payday and hopefully for a winning team. Yeah. But yeah, I, th- I, I think it's solid. I think like, it works yeah. on both sides. I think, like you said, he can, he can still, you know, he's still around the agent. He still can he still get, maybe possibly get a, another, you know, third contract or whatever. So and, I think and yeah, if he gets I in the receiver. And if he gets another like prime receiver next to him on the other side and an actual quarterback who can throw the ball without having uh, two sprained ankles, <laughs> um, I think uh, he, he, he has a ton of potential. I mean, d- just the simple fact of what he's been able to put up with the shit that he's had to deal with is remarkable. But, yeah, we can stick on with the uh, – Stick with the Washington Commanders and talk about their new uh, uniforms. So on top of a couple days just before this contract announcement, uh, Washington Commanders unveiled their new uniforms with Carson Wentz and the whole team. I can pull it up right here for everybody to see. Gabe, have you gotten to see the new uniforms? I have not. So I'm just finding out just like everybody else on the podcast, I guess, of course. Of course, we're on YouTube, so this is a visual medium. I'll try to describe it if you're listening to the podcast on. Here's what I'll say. Um, so I think yeah. they're just quick thought. I think they're sick. I actually really fuck with it. I, I like it way more than last year's and anything that the Redskins wear. Like these are the best uniforms they've ever had. Very modern, very sleek, simple, zoom it clean. In, zoom, in, zoom it in. Let me see. Zoom it in. Um, here, so, we're going to get some more yeah. zoom in shots of here. All right, so uh, basically, what well, you got a nice red, little patch, a red one, a white jersey, and a black jersey. Yeah, right. you got the burgundy, patch, yellow, whatever. burgundy, white, and black. I like the little texture. All right, now that white, I like the texture on on the got their got logos, their championship. Like, I don't care. It looks like a soccer logo. Oh, it's like a, a New Zealand flag. A crest. Why do they have three stars? Like a crest. Yeah. So the red jersey. Eh. Uh, no. All right, the texture on there. I, I'm I'm feeling the texture. The texture looks pretty good yeah it's it's, it's, it's a very numbers. like modern look here's the black all right stop very, right there. stop yeah. right here this looks like a steelers jersey i'm sorry <laughs> steelers jersey? <laughs> nah i don't like it it's got that red like <clears throat> you don't like i, I do think I it's a little simple i, like I do jersey. i do like the patches i think the patches are sick I, I like i'm guessing this is the washington dc flag this is the three stars represent i don't know anything about washington dc okay. so i'm assuming that i mean what else would that be you know um, got the commanders right on the chest, like a that looks, like a mil- that look good. like it goes hard. It looks like a Text like a mili- like a military like a military patch. Yeah, okay, which, which I, name, okay, yeah. that's okay, that's fine. But you know that you know what that actually would have been piece. obviously you it would change up everything. But I think that'd be kind of cool if they put like your name just like military like the patch right there, commanders, and you had like your name. But obviously they're not going to do that. I mean, I Here's the white, but Chase Young. White, the white, the white is not bad. I think white goes really good with uh, a lot of stuff. So this white, this white is not that bad. It's, it's. A, I like the texture on the, on that on that font. Here's, and then the red one, just, it looks like they're regular. It looks like they're normal, like a uh, previous. It looks comfortable. Like it, it, it looks like it looked like it'd be a comfortable jersey just to buy and like wear. The helmet, I, I fuck um, with the helmet. I think the helmet's sick. The only thing I love I the like, dots. See on this. <laughs> the on no. yeah, yeah. The texture. On the, the only thing I would like to see is if they had that commander's bigger, like thicker and bigger, make it bigger. Well, on the red it's jersey, it's huge. Me, it's right over there. Yeah. Which actually, did the white even have it? No, I think a wa- white washes Washington. Washington, and then the then the black. <laughs> I kind of. It looks like the like black that. is the I only like that one that. I don't like that black one, man. I like well. I like the it, patch on the black one. I like. I don't know. I like the black one. I like how it gives me like a yeah, military like a kind of vibe. To me, dude, <laughs> give me the Steelers. It's because it's black and yellow. I don't know, man. It, yeah, I like, I'd like. It. It's very like. military influence. I think. So. I like it's I, whatever. I don't like the. I'm not gonna re-room for them anyways. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. We're doing Jersey Watch. They're, they're, that's another right. thing. You know what we should do. All right, so we we've talked about bringing up topics of controversy, or whatever. We should do when JoJo gets back on here. Sorry, JoJo, sorry, couldn't be here. We got to do a jersey, like let's do, you know, especially now some new jerseys come out, a like jersey like, ranking, like, city edition jersey, yeah, for the NFL, NBA. We got to do a jersey thing with, like, especially with JoJo's around, 
because you top know, ten, uh, we give our yeah. our top five. Maybe we each give our top five going into the season and stuff. So I, I mean, overall, you like it overall. I'm like, it's whatever. Like to me, like I think oh, it's clean. Not my I, I don't think it's like amazing. I don't think it's like the Chargers jersey. It's clean though, and it has a modern take on it. Um, I do like the military aspect for the black jersey. Um, the white looks kind of plain, looks kind of whatever, um, and the red looks like that classic. It looks like they had a mix of like, you know, just a plain white one. The red is like representing like, you know, the history of the team. It looks like it's staying true to what it always looked like, and the black is like a whole different take. Because I don't think did they ever have a black jersey? I'm not a Redskins fan or a Washington so. fan. No, no, I don't think so. Yeah, that that red one looks like the previous jersey, like the ones they had before. I, I like the white one the most. I think white. I just love white. So really? It goes hard with I'm me. not a white jersey kind of guy. I and think that black one can be really That black funny. one, get that out of here. Get that black one out of here. That, that's just Really? Cool. I yeah, find I white know. jerseys kind of plain, personally. But, but anyways, yeah, I, I think I think yeah. they're clean. It's it's definitely modern, um, but they're also keeping it simple. So um, I, do, I will say I still do like football team more i think that's kind of cool it kind of has that european flair with like you know washington like how they do like football club fc like i kind of like that washington football team especially with it being a historic team like they are but commanders it is what it is but anyways right. um yeah we'll switch over so recently there's some Rumors, some bubblings coming out about Sunday Ticket. As everybody knows, uh, NFL is entering their final year with DirecTV with Sunday Ticket. Thank God, because Direct, I'm sure that the Sunday Ticket is the only thing keeping DirecTV afloat. And when NFL made that deal, Satellite was like the new wave over cable. But now Satellite is uh, ancient technology that we found in the ruins of the uh the original United, the twenty, uh, the two yeah, thousand. The metaverse, man. <laughs> the metaverse. Where's the metaverse streaming? But um, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So it looks like now because all these big legendary networks have already paid a shit ton of money to the NFL. I think we mentioned it last year. NFL signed like a hundred and ten billion dollar deal over the course of ten years with all the major networks. But the only thing left on the table is the Sunday ticket. So pretty much all the traditional networks are done. They don't have any more money. They don't have enough money to, to do it. And the estimated cost that it's going to, that they're looking at is around $3 billion a year. And the four major players are pretty much all the streaming services. So yeah, a big one, especially is Apple. Um, to me, the biggest ones is Apple and prime. Um, people talk about Netflix. I don't think Netflix is in the running for it. I think Netflix is more interested in formula one, but Apple and uh, Prime Video are the big ones. Prime obviously already has a Thursday night football deal um, with the NFL for the next few years. Um, And then Apple that we talked about in our last episode just made a big splash purchasing all the rights for MLS. Um, So They have MLB Friday night. Yeah, and they have Friday night, and then they have Friday night baseball. But that was like – that's – it's like 90 million. Yeah, it's been a while, but I'm saying they're, <laughs> training, they're getting in the sports game. Yeah, so they're, they're getting into it. Um, personally, man, I I think Apple's going to get it. I think I think they're going to flex yeah. their muscles. They're going to get it. I think, but I I wouldn't be surprised with either. I wouldn't be surprised with either. Like I said, M, like I said um, NFL is already established with Prime, and maybe they're okay with just having those Thursday night footballs. Maybe they're not ready to jump in entirely. But to Apple, I mean, $3 billion a year is like a drop in the bucket to them. That's like nothing, especially a company that produces like hundred and what fifty million dollars and fifty billion dollars, hundred and fifty billion dollars annually in revenue or some shit like that. So three billion a year is like nothing to them. Um, so I I I that's just that weird hunch that I have. I just think it's gonna do it. And also as an MLS fan, I do kind of wish that they is also on so I could combine it. Cause the last thing, I mean, I'm pretty much at this point, I have fucking every service I've, <laughs> at this point, except for like HBO. Yeah. But so hopefully nothing goes to HBO. Cause I, there's nothing on there. I really care to have. Uh, <laughs> and honestly, I don't even have Apple now, but if they get Sunday, I'm already considering about getting it with MLS. So if they pick up NFL, then it's pretty much a no brainer for me. I'm going to get it. But also on top of this, uh, whoever gets the rights for Sunday ticket, they're also more than likely going to get um, NFL Plus, like bundled with it. And I guess NFL Plus is this new thing they're coming out with this season where it's going to be like more exclusive content only on NFL Plus. Um, 
So it looks like they might bundle that with that. That's what some people are pre- guessing. Um, and also, if you don't know the NFL, uh, what is it called? Game Pass. You know, you can rewatch and replay games from different angles and take clips and stuff like that. That They're also talking about that being included into the Sunday ticket package. But uh, yeah, Gabe, what do you think? Is this the future of sports? Do you like this? Will you buy whatever service it'll be on? Uh, um, NFL Sunday ticket is a little bit different. I guess I guess NFL the Sunday ticket would be good if you're like out of the region, right? Because, you know, obviously you have local sports. I have, sports, right? I so have to use Sunday ticket. I, to yeah. watch my Jaguar games, I have to use Sunday ticket. Yeah, you're living in Miami. You have to watch Jaguar games, obviously, because you're out of region or whatever. If you live in Orlando, probably you could probably get those games, but because you live in South. So um, I guess it's good for that. If you have a, you know, if you're uh, live far away from the actual four stream, like if I was maybe a Seattle fan, maybe then maybe that would make sense. But um, uh, NFL ticket, I wasn't really a big, you know, big on NFL ticket. I think red zone. Also just like, so you know, yeah, red zone is associated with NFL ticket. Oh, just okay. to throw that in there. Cause I thought, that, I thought it was separate. You can buy it separate or whatever. No. Um, but I think people would be more interested if you're like a true football fan, like, uh, okay. So, like I like watching the games, but, I'll watch the games on Red Zone because Red Zone, I get all the, you know, it's crack injected into my veins. You just, uh, it's nonstop all the highlights. Like action for like it's eight nonstop hours. It's nonstop sports, at, you know, top 10 sports, you know, sports center, top 10, just nonstop. Um, so I'll, I would be more interested in buying, you know, Red no Zone than actual Sunday either. ticket. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Sunday ticket, um, I guess it can be bundled. I wonder, I, I'm also, also, we haven't talked about like Disney possibly, but right. Cause Disney has ESPN, Disney has all those kinds of shit. Disney is. Obey- yes. Um, yeah. That I forgot about this ESPN Plus, but something's telling me that's I don't think they're in the, the running for it. I think they've already put so much money into it already for their Monday night football. I just I don't I don't see it. And Disney already backed out. I don't know if you know, but like I guess a big bidding thing that they did recently was the Indian Cricket League. And they backed out of that one. But that was like a huge and that was a huge deal too. That was I don't, I don't remember how much them. It was billions of dollars for that, which I, I mean, it makes sense. I just never thought about the Indian pr- Cricket League being such a big uh, hot commodity. But yeah, that's what makes me feel like ESPN Plus is not really in the running. Yeah. So if, if I had to pick, I, I would think the NFL uh, for the NFL ticket, uh, Sunday ticket, would be probably Apple. All right. They have the technology, probably. They have, they have the cash flow, right? Because they're, they're, they're the main way they make money is not through they make money through technology right through computers phones and shit they don't they don't make money off of uh but but they have expendable revenue like this is a small drop in the bucket of what they actually make like so this is like they can experiment with like buying football um, yeah i will be the same with amazon usually a lot of yeah yeah and and the deal would be you know usually the deals they go about 10 years so that that's about the right time to like assess like okay where is the market at um but yeah, man, I, I think I could see any of these companies going in. I, I like I said, I lean more towards Apple, and I think Apple's trying to get more to streaming last sports. Something sports about sports. it, right? It's like it's something about yeah. it, and I also my precursor. I'm not an Apple guy. I don't have any Apple products. I'm an Android guy, but I do acknowledge that Apple does have a really clean and easy to use interfaces for all their products, and I trust Apple to make a cleaner interface going through the app than I would the prime app because yeah. as it stands, I'm not a huge fan of the prime app. I mean, I, I watch my shows on there that I like like the boys and so on and so forth, but it's not the cleanest of apps. It, yeah. It's it's just not. So let me ask you a question. So on NFL Sunday, are you guys like, what are you doing? Like I've never ever watched football on my phone. Like I've had maybe the iPad that I took to a bar, uh, maybe I, I went to a bar that didn't have a TV, so I had my app and I would just open it up to watch whatever I'll stream whatever foot sports or whatever. Um, like I, I think I had YouTube, I had YouTube TV for a little bit, so some I, w- I would go watch Dolphin games on my iPad. But like in general, like how do you watch sports? Like are you watching at home? You watch on your computer? You watching on your TV? Like with a with a you know I don't know Apple TV or or what? How are you in like well, looking at sports? If I'm home, I'm watching on my TV. Um, but sometimes, you know, I'm just out and about or from like go visiting somebody or something, I'll have it on my phone or for traveling, I'll have it on my phone. Um, but for the most part, especially if it's football season, like my plan on every Sunday, I let everybody know, like <laughs> my girlfriend always said, it's Sunday. That's football time. That's my time. I've worked all fucking week. 
Football time is my time from one o'clock to seven. Those six hours are mine. So pretty much I, I watch my Jag game, whatever day that might be. And then I'm like you, just pop on Red Zone. I don't really care to watch any game individually. Um, and usually if I do watch other game, either Red Zone or their fantasy channel, because I don't know if you know, like there's a Red Zone channel, which is just like, and then there's like a fantasy channel that works essentially the same as the Red Zone channel, but is a little bit more fantasy focuses, a little bit more fantasy focused. And we'll put all the stuff, put all the stats and everything. And that's another thing based off what I've seen from Apple with their Friday night baseballs. I don't know if you've actually hopped on to like check it out. I did like uh, last week because I was curious to see how they did things ever since the MLS announcement. But they do make it very stats oriented. They have that clean like kind of Apple font and everything on the side. On the bottom corners, they have like... um, the hit percentage, like the percentage that uh, the this uh, player has a chance of hitting the ball um, yeah. per pitch. Like uh, they put like betting lines and stuff like that. And then that alone kind of makes me feel like they can do a really good job in the stats department and having like f- your fantasy. Uh, maybe you could select your separate players and stuff on like your, maybe you can link your roster or something. That'd be really cool to me. And you can see your roster, your, you know, your stats change in real time, your fantasy team change in real time. Um, so yeah. Oh, my fucking mic cut out, but yeah, I, 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 I'm actually, I, I think two is going to be cheaper. I don't know if you know. I think Sunday ticket runs for like $50 or $70 a season. I don't pay that much. I go through other means. But um, <laughs> I think yeah. I do also think it'll make it cheaper. I don't think they're going to be charging $70. You know, that's people aren't going to do that. In general, like what I'm watching, so like I'll watch the Dolphins game. But if, if you know, I'm living in Texas now, so I can't find it. So uh, I'll go on the computer and, and try to find the Dolphins game. But sometimes I'll have like two or three games. So uh, I'll have the Dolphins game, and then I'll have like uh, on my computer, I'll have like either Red Zone, which has all the games, and then like maybe two other games that I'm looking at. Maybe one game that I'm like, all right, I'm super interested in this. I know we're going to talk about it on the podcast. I'm like, this is a good game, whatever. It's like, the Bills versus the Chiefs or something. Like, I'll put that up there. And so I have, like, two or three games going and then maybe a red zone on the bottom corner. Mm -hmm. Um, And I just kind of switch through depending on where, you know, what the interest is. Oh, Um, actually, yeah, speaking of that real quick, like, on the computer version of Sunday Ticket, you can do that. Like, you kind of like, you know, like what what I just did now. Like, um, like, for example, when I shared my screen – for for the audio listeners, you won't be able to see, but like for the video uh, watchers, you can see like they do something similar where you can have like three games here and then your main game here. If you, but it's only for the mobile version. I mean the uh, desktop yeah. version. When I watch it on my TV, um, or if I because uh, I, I put it on my phone and I cast it to the TV because uh, I have a smart TV, but it doesn't have the NF. I can't download apps. It's not like a Fire Stick or yeah, nothing. So. Um. Yeah. So I can't do that. But even on the Fire Stick, you can't do that. It's all, I've only noticed it's only on the desktop version where you can put up the multiple games. And I hope I, I they're for sure going to do it. But uh, I'm, I would be really pumped once they add that to where you can have your main game on there with the main audio. And then you have those side games underneath. And then you can have like a fantasy thing on the side. Like that would be like ideal. Have it all on just one big ass screen. and You can just yeah. watch everything. Yeah, I've seen people like people who have cable. Like I've seen them like they have like six TVs, like the four, five, six TVs, and they just put one game on each. Like you just get the remote, and put it whatever. So, but I usually just do it through my computer, and you know I might cast it either cast it to a TV or cast it to uh, have a projector. Um, but mainly, I use a computer uh, to to watch. So I would never like use my phone. I, you know, like I, like I said, the only time I had an iPad, I would take it to a bar that I know didn't have a TV or they didn't have whatever. Uh, but mainly at the house is on the computer. So if, if they're making it easier or more, you know, I would be interested in that. But I think in general, the Sunday ticket as a whole, I'm not really interested in, but uh, the red zone is what I would be like interested in watching. That's what I watch. Yeah. If I had to pick between one or it's, the other it's, Sunday ticket I mean, or yeah. red zone, I'd pick red zone. 
it's it's the best. Like Red Zone is the best, and it's going to be included in it. Like Red Zone is if you're not watching Red Zone or their fantasy channel is like the best because if you're, you watch your your favorite team, you watch your home team, and then after that, yeah, you put it on. There's no commercials, and it's just constant action the whole time. You're seeing like the best plays. You're seeing it live, or when a game gets down to the wire. You know they'll they'll focus on that game with the minute left, and then as soon as it that game goes into commercial break, it then bounces over to the other game. It it's it's awesome, and then I like how it's like you don't have to flip through to find the score. It's like, all right, you don't care about this game. We're not going to put this one on. It's like they're losing, you know, thirty to nothing. Like you know what I mean? Like, yeah. but yeah, um, uh, I can't wait. Um, I do think it's going to be a lot cheaper too. And I think everything's just going to be more intuitive. And then direct TV is probably going to die after that. So <laughs> RIP direct TV. They got one more year of uh, survival left and, uh, yeah, but, uh, let's right. talk about what some, some, so, I mean, I guess, is this even NFL? They're former NFL players. I don't think they're currently yeah. on a team. But Maybe on Bell's not on a team? I don't think so. No? But Adrian Peter, he's about to hire a team, though. Adrian Peterson versus Le'Veon Bell boxing match? First thoughts. Wow. First thing that comes to mind, Gabe, wow. what is it? Uh, ridiculous. Why are we doing this celebrity <laughs> boxing match? Um <laughs> That's my first thought. Second thought is uh, only thing I've heard about Adrian Peterson is like this guy is a freak in the gym. Like he he puts up ridiculous weights, stuff that you would never see. So he's like, uh, I don't know, super cut, super strong, but he's a lot older. So I don't know what his regimen is now. Uh, Adrian Peterson versus Le'Veon Bell. My third thought is Le'Veon Bell. I don't think Le'Veon was a big dude. Like I don't think – is he tiny? I don't he was a shifty guy. He yeah. was he was not he was not a power runner. He was like Adrian Peterson was no, a downhill. Was... Yeah, Adrian Peterson was a downhill power runner who had speed to break away. Adrian Peterson in his prime was one of a kind. I don't it'll be a long time before we see another Adrian Peterson because Adrian Peterson had the ability to make somebody miss. He had the speed to take it home and he had the power to sh- just go right up the middle and break tackles and run. Like I, there's just very, usually a guy's either one or the other. They're like an air back who can like move and catch out of the backfield and a shifty. But then you have your power guys who just jam it right up the middle for like goal line runs. But like Adrian Peterson, he was the ultimate, like can do all running back. The dude was an absolute freak of nature. I'd say Le'Veon Bell is definitely smaller from what I, just from what I can oh. think of, I've never seen them side by side, but it, well, from what I can imagine, well, what the wiki's pulling up is they're both six one, so they're at least the same height. Like I never thought of Le'Veon Bell's big, but apparently they're the same size. But there's a seven year hey, difference. Le'Veon. Now, Adrian Peterson's thirty seven years old, Le'Veon Bell's thirty years old, so you got eight year difference. Uh, so there's, I guess, a difference between there. If you want to watch them, box. are you actually interested in them boxing? Like, do you care about stuff like this? Like, I don't give a shit. Celebrities. I, I, I honestly don't care. And, um, the only way they're fighting is if they're part of some other celebrity, uh, thing. Like no one cares Paul enough. Shit. Yeah. The, the Paul. Yeah, yeah. Like, unless there's some like Logan Paul, Jake Paul fight, like they can't have a standalone fight. First off, like half the people, don't even know who they No, A lot of people aren't even going to know who they are unless you're a football fan. And if you are a football fan, what, how many people are actually going to watch it that knows who they are? So it's like, it has to be affiliated with some other like Paul brother boxing celebrity shit. Like I can't imagine it. So Adrian Peterson's two seventeen. I swore. I thought Adrian Peterson was bigger or at least he used to be. And then what's uh way beyond bell. Maybe. But I don't even know, like, what's their level of fighting? Like, uh, what kind of level profession? They're saying they Le'Veon like, Bell's got fighting 15 since pounds. They're saying Le'Veon Bell's got 15 pounds on Adrian Peterson. I don't know if I'd buy that. Yeah. Adrian Peterson seems believe, like a bigger guy than me. Like, yeah. Um. So, I don't know, man. It, it It's like the celebrity thing. It's like whatever. You know, Frank Gore, obviously, uh, recently, like, Obviously, he had he had a couple fights. I think one he got knocked out pretty bad. He one fought, he fought who? okay, and then the only got knocked out. I thought he only he only had one fight. Let me see. I know he got knocked out. Bad. If, and I, but I think he's like trying to make. You're thinking of like you're thinking of Nate Robinson. 
No. Nate Robinson got knocked out as well, but yeah. Um Frank Gore had one fight. Who did he got who he fought a basketball player? Who who the hell uh, Ola, Frank Gore? Uh, Alasanyinde Olorun Solo. I know it just ripped apart that day. He got Kato. That was when like, was this? Name. He had a second fight. Oh, he fought Darren Man. Williams. That's right. Darren Williams. That's what I was talking about. Okay. That's what I'm saying. He fought two Darren fights. Williams so Darren had Williams had a yeah. which was bad. But here's he the thing. Them Darren out. Williams was way taller, way bigger than him. Darren was way taller, way bigger than him. And then he fought at a professional fight recently, which uh uh like I said. Oh wait, Darren Williams won by split decision. Yeah, but it was pretty bad. Like Frank Gore, he held his own, but it, Frank Gore didn't look uh he slow. Didn't look, yeah. He didn't look that great. Um, but he did win by KO you. in May. Yeah, he's trying to pry for pressure. That's what I'm saying. So oh, yeah, he did. Gore, he he not, is, yeah, he knocked out somebody. I did, I did not hear about this. I guess it's just some under the radar boxing thing. I I it was a month ago. Yeah, I had no idea no. about this. Frank Gore's turning pro. So uh, unless it's like so like it's like some Gore's Jake Paul thing. Pro. Unless it's some Jake Paul thing, I guess I have no Ooh, interest yeah. in it. Like I like I don't know. Like oh, Adrian Peterson, where have you been? I, w- I would love to see you box. That I don't. I have mean, that he was just on the Titans like last year. I think it was. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I don't care um, to see these fucking guys box like. I'd... Oh, which by the way, we talk about Logan Paul. Didn't he? He just signed something with WWE. Is he becoming a professional wrestler? Did you hear about that? Logan Paul. I believe the smaller brother, the not the no, not Jake. What's the other one? Who's the other one? Yeah, Jake, Jake and Logan. Logan, Logan. Yeah, the bigger guy with the longer hair. Uh, that makes sense. He was yeah. on. He he did wrestle. He did a WWE a few times, or he was on WrestleMania or something. That to me that fits yeah. him. I could totally see him doing that. Um, I think Jake is a little bit more talented in the boxing department. And I think he really wants to like keep on doing that. Logan fits WWE perfect. He has the size and the build for it. He's a bigger guy, and obviously he has the the uh, charisma and the uh, <clears throat> the shit talking ability to be in WWE. Holy shit! Yeah, yeah he I just signed. Sent you a leak now, so this but, was two uh, hours ago. What the hell? I mean, he signed yeah, yesterday. It was like it was announced yesterday, but they're doing twenty. You know, so basically, he's doing it for a. So basically, he's doing it for a year. I think uh, uh, the WWE is trying to get good press. They're trying to get press for you know WWE's having some tough press. But there you go, Logan Paul, WWE. He'll be on there. They also signed uh, WWE. Is that Triple signed, H's uh, daughter? Not tr- is that his? No, his that's his daughter? wife, dude. That's his dude. Look- that's McMahon, dude. That's a McMahon. Is it? They look, they look, yeah. She looks exactly like. Okay, no, I see the McMahon married, face, dude. <laughs> yeah, I see right. the McMahon face. You're making now. my inner. You're making my inner wrestling fan come out. I haven't watched wrestling in about ten years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know who's. I don't know <laughs> whose daughter looked like. <laughs> so wait, is Triple H like? Thing. He's like in the WWE front office now. No, he's on the board, dude. He's on the board. Oh shit! He's been on the board for a while. He's been a. He's been a enforcer. I did not know that. He 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 help you know he makes people shine. If uh, it's your turn to get the championship, he'll help you get the championship. Well, know. yeah, All this right. definitely Let's, makes sense. This is perfect. He was already in it before. Now he's like officially on it. I think this is good. That that I, that totally fits him. But yeah, I mean, no more celebrity. But I'm I'm I think we're oh, I think we're past the point where no one cares anymore. I think we've reached a point where no one gives a shit about celebrity boxing matches. What do you think? <laughs> It's fine. It's like whatever. Like it's just thing. When there's when you know during the pandemic when there's nothing going on, like we're just like starving for any entertainment. Like we're just looking for movies or something. It's fine. But like now, do I actually actively like? Oh, I need to watch a little. Like I don't care. It's that. It's <laughs> past me. Like that. Maybe some fourteen year old kid is like, oh, it's Logan Paul. What is he doing? I need to. I follow his Jake YouTube. Paul. I need to. I, I follow his Twitch. Do whatever. Like maybe if you're interested in that shit, me, I don't give a goddamn. Like these are not. <laughs> whatever. Adrian Peterson, well, do your thing. I don't know. I don't know how you're making money now, but if you want to do a celebrity boxing fight, good for you, man. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna shit on you making money if, you, if that's how you. Do it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Uh, well, let's get back to a real sport. Uh, <laughs> um, so big news, literally. I think it was yesterday or like early today. Um, just announced that US NCAA, by the way, USC and UCLA are planning to join the Big Ten. What do you think, Gabe? First yeah, thoughts. I saw this. First thoughts. About- go. Hot take. Um, go. 
my hottest take is all these all these schools are gonna move. They're trying to make money. Uh, all these schools are gonna move. I don't know. I, I don't really have any serious like. Uh, I'm upset about this, or I'm angry about this. I was like, yeah, it's probably a business decision uh, on behalf of the school to go. Like, I don't know. You're you're more into college. Like, uh, college, I'm not really huge on. So, I don't know. Like, what what have you thought about like USC? Uh, is this is, is this a transgression? Like, USC shouldn't have done this, or what? What do you think? Of? Uh, I mean, I don't watch college. I mean, I've watched college, but I don't watch it like that either. Like, now like I do NFL, but um. Obviously, we can't just consider college football. We have to look at the whole grand scheme of things. Um, from a football perspective, which I think is the biggest draw, let's be real. College football brings in more money for these colleges more than anything else. Um, I kind of feel like this is a downgrade to competition. Like, honestly, obviously the Pac-12 hasn't been – super strong like it has been over the past 10 years um the past year and past year or two it hasn't been that strong but over the course of pretty much the 2000s uh pac-12 has been a pretty competitive and some a lot of people would say is the second best uh conference in the uh in college football and i I, I feel like this is a downgrade. I mean, outside of the Big Ten, I mean, in the Big Ten, I mean, obviously Iowa made moves this uh, this past season. They 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 ranked pretty high, but like really, it's just been Ohio State running the show, and then Michigan kind of had a good year this past year, and it looks like they're going to have another good year. But I mean, are those programs? going to be consistently better over the long term than like a Stanford, than like a Oregon, um, a Utah, like, I don't know. I mean, I, it's, comp- I think as it stands now, big 12 compared to pac 12, it seems pretty, I would say big 10 probably has a little bit of the edge just pat- over this past season, but over the course of the past 20 years, the Pac-12 has been a stronger conference, in my opinion. And I'm a little surprised. I I don't feel like it's an upgrade. I feel like it's either a downgrade or it's equal. Like, when Texas is when Texas made the move, Texas and Oklahoma, well, I don't know if it's this year, but they're making the move to the SEC. That's an upgrade for yeah. them. That's a big deal. Yeah. That's a huge. I mean, the, you're going into the most what, what, competitive conference. I would say they're trying to make like a power league, right? The, the best schools, the biggest schools, the yeah. most popular schools. They're just trying to make like their own little league to the side, right? That's what I feel yeah. like the SEC is. That, that, yeah, and the, the Oklahoma Texas move made sense. This USC UCLA move does not make a lot of sense to me, and also geographically, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Big Ten schools are more Midwestern schools. I mean, I think they're almost entirely Midwestern schools. These would be the first coastal schools, I believe in the, in the, um, the conference, but I, I don't know. I, I just, I think you're going to miss out on a lot of rivalry games as well. Um, but let's be real. USC and UCLA have not really been playing too hot over the past, like for a while now. I don't know how long, but it's, it's been a minute, like really Oregon, and uh, Stanford's been kind of running that conference. So I don't know. I, I, I don't see the point in it. Like I, unless there was just a, unless big 10, I don't know if conferences can do this unless they gave them an offer. They just couldn't refuse because I think big 10 wanted more competition in their conference, especially seeing how they performed in the college football playoffs how they got absolutely smoked by Georgia and Alabama. Um, well, um, uh, Alabama beat Michigan, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like I, I don't see the point in it. The, I think if anything, this helps the big 10. Um, I don't know if this really helps USC or USC LA. Um, definitely doesn't definitely hurts pac 12, but who does pac 12 replace them lot. with? I, I, I think, uh, Hawaii might be in the running for uh, Pac-12. Um, I don't know who else would they throw in there, but yeah, yeah I think uh, I think UC, UCF 
Um, who else? I think it was UCF and Cincinnati got accepted to Big 12 since Oklahoma and Texas are leaving. So oh, okay, that was a nice pickup for them. Um, I'm pretty sure that's the case. I don't know if that finalized or not, but I know UCF and Cincinnati – we're either being looked at or they are going to the Big 12 to replace those two. So who replaces them in the Pac-12? That remains to be seen. Um, I think a Hawaii um, maybe – I have to see who's in that conference. I have to, to think about it, but I don't know. What do you think, Gabe? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's fine. I mean, I, I feel like there's going to be lots of moves. Like we already talked about previously. Like last year we were talking about how all these teams are going to try to make uh, – these power, you know, uh, these power conferences where it's just like only the top teams, only like the top eight, top ten teams uh, to form, you know, especially like at the SEC or whatever. So um, it's like uh, for me, it's like par for the course. This is just business on behalf of the, the colleges, I guess. They're trying to, you know, maximize uh, the amount of revenue they can make. We're talking about football, but it could be basketball. Baseball makes money as well. So it, it'll be – I think it's just interesting. Like these were the new – the new era of uh, you know NIL sports and uh, NCAA kind of losing power and and the schools taking more instead of the NCAA being a, a uh, an, an institution an entity I think the schools are taking more power back to themselves and moving so like me personally I'm not a huge college fan I'll watch it whatever like if if, if it's Miami playing USC I'll definitely watch it. so uh, not not crazy news for me i don't know yeah i mean college uh, hold up i mean um i have a map of it look at this oh yeah i, put I mean they're, t- they're, ta- yeah. they're talking i mean look at this this is the big 10 that's a that's a huge travel uh for ucla and usc the farthest west team is nebraska that's a, like <laughs> that's yeah. wild to me um and you're you're going to lose out on so much of those regional rivalries. Um, I do think from a basketball perspective, this is good. I think you're going to start facing higher competition from a basketball perspective um, because Big Ten, I I think, is a stronger basketball conference than the Pac-12. But, I mean, like I said, let's be real. College football is the one that's bringing up money. The NCAA, I think 90% of their revenue comes from ticket sales and – which ones are selling the most tickets is the football games. So yeah, I, I don't know. I think it really hurts regional, regional rivalries. Um, I think the travel is going to suck and I don't necessarily think you're getting better competition. Um, let me see who's in the pack 12. I'm actually kind of curious. I got, I wonder if I pulled up. Yeah, um, USC was uh, a private school, which I learned. I didn't even realize it was a private school. Um, but they have Utah, Washington State, um, USC Berkeley, UC LA, uh, Arizona. There's also a school there. All right, so here's a here's a map. You can kind of see it. It's kind of yeah. small, but you kind of see see what's there. Um, there's a couple. Yeah, there's I, a couple schools that could get. Re- recruited into the Pac-12, maybe like a Fresno State, maybe like a UNLV. Uh, Keep it West Coast, maybe, you think? Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, it's Pac-12, man, Pacific 12. Like, it, it has to be like <sighs> – I mean, maybe a BYU. That could be um, interesting. Like a, I, I could see a BYU maybe getting invited. I, I don't really follow Pac-12 like that. It's not my region. Yeah. But – and there's a couple. There's a couple teams you could throw in there. Like I said, a, a maybe a Boise State, uh, a BYU, a Hawaii, a UNLV, Fresno State. There's a. It's, obviously, you're gonna have to have the infrastructure and the money um, to get invited. And I don't know which schools have the most infrastructure and money and programs, but I don't know. I guess that will remain to be seen. Um, I haven't looked at the detail. Maybe they yeah. did announce who they're possibly gonna replace them with, but I don't know. I, this is so breaking news. I didn't really see, but so yeah, let's, I let's guess transition over. Let's, we'll see. Let's, let's transition over to other sports. Um, you know, obviously we have uh, coming up soon two seventy five UFC two seventy five. As we fights on Saturday night. Uh, I don't know, uh, uh, Julian. You are a resident expert for all UFC things. Um, 
But what, what's going on in uh, UFC that uh, you're kind of interested in? Hold up. Uh, I lost the card. I just had the thing up. Okay. You can pull it up on the... Yeah, there you go. Wait, it is not 275. What the hell? Threes. 276. Okay, there we go. 276. Okay. So here are the fights we got here. We have obviously the main card Israel Adesanya versus Jared Cannonier. Um, Alexander Volin- Vol- Volkanovsky versus Max Holloway. Um, that's going to be a pretty good fight. Uh, Robbie, Ro- Robbie Lawler coming back, Alex Perea. Um, Sean O'Malley's fighting again. Um, Misha Take fight is canceled. I did not know that. Um, but yeah, that is the main card. And then, yeah, nothing of note in the uh, early prelims. Um, but yeah, which fight on here do you are you looking most forward to, Gabe? Are you going to watch the fight this weekend or try to watch him? Yeah, watch. I'm gonna try to look out for. It. I mean, I think I think in time out of Sonya fights, like uh, he's very. Uh, I think he's very fun to watch in the ring. Um, uh, he's like uh, give or take. Like some some things he does off the ring. I'm like, uh, oh, it's he's okay, whatever. He's funny. And that was shit. I'm like, all right, you know, you being kind of you know you're rubbing people the wrong way. But Adesanya is definitely a, a big name fighter that I'm interested in watching. Um, I don't know how the fight's gonna be, but I just I'm interested in him as. Uh, a casual, casual UFC fan. Um, yeah, what, he, what, what, like, what do you, what do you? Yeah, I mean, he's just a super interesting. He's a super entertaining fighter, and he even talks about. He's like, man, I just want to find the coolest way to knock people out, and I, I admire that about him. He, he really embraces like you know how he's really into anime and like, uh, and all kind of different um styles of fighting, and it takes a lot of inspiration from that. And I, I really like. His style, he's obviously probably the arguably one of the best strikers in the uh, UFC right now. He is probably the most dominant champion in his division currently, I would say. Well, up there with Usman. But he's pretty much wiped clean the middleweight division. Um, I expect him to win again uh, Saturday night against Cannoneer. Israel Adesanya is just a special human being he is a really good fighter highly talented and he he's there to put on a show and he knows it and like that's why people so many people like him um so i'm really pumped to see the fight um i i, I hope it's just a blowout i hope he not i hope we get a, a really sick knockout with the kick like you want to be fast though you don't want to be quick right you have plans for this saturday because you know we i just want to i want to i want to i just want a one round knockout man Give me oh, that. Okay. You want a quick? So sometimes yeah. we, we've gone out before. We've seen the UFC fight. We went to the AL House or whatever. And like we're sitting there. It's like a whole event, right? It goes always last till midnight on the East Coast. It's like, um, so it's it's like, like 1 a.m., dude. A whole to do. Yeah. It's like 1 a.m. Midnight if you're lucky. Um, yeah. So you want to you want a quick fight? Just be in and out, and done. I, I would just like to see him fight because I haven't seen I haven't seen a lot of UFC uh, recently. So like I just want to see him do well. Uh, uh, in his fight, so I, I'm rooting for him, kind of, but you know, I don't know what to expect because I don't know the uh, the other fighter too much. Um, what, what do you yeah. think about uh, Sean O'Malley? Because Sean O'Malley is a favorite, one of your favorite guys. You put me on Sean. Oh O'Malley. yeah, that that dude uh, is electrifying, like, uh, man. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you think about Sean O'Malley? Like, uh, what was the last time that he actually fought? Do you, do you remember? Because um, yeah, we've seen a we've right. seen a couple of Sean O'Malley it's, fights. It's been a it's it's, it's, it's been a, a little bit. Um, let me no, see. he's fifteen. But yeah, fifteen I, and one, and and no, he he's undefeated. That, that he had. He's, <laughs> he's undefeated. undefeated. <laughs> he's undefeated. His last fight was that was over a year ago. No, my bad. It was in December. Oh yeah, against. Okay, yeah, I I remember that guy. Yeah, so it's been about six. I mean, months, it's been months. knockouts, bro. I mean, he has yeah. how many straight? He has. Well, he says seventy percent of his wins are by. He knockout. has one, two, three. Four, five, six. He lost the decision. So he has six straight knockouts, bro, in the UFC. Yeah. Six straight knockouts slash TKOs in the UFC. The guy is uh, – he's electrifying to watch. He's kind of – like I said, he kind of reminds me of Adesanya, but maybe a little bit just faster and a little bit more 
um, what's the word, showboaty than Adesanya, but kind of that same like very aggressive striking style and will try to knock you out no matter what. And he's just a super electrifying fire he uh, fighter. He hasn't really fought anybody super strong yet. I would like to see him start, you know, taking on some higher competition. But yeah, I, I'm I'm always pumped to see him fight. I know a lot of people don't like him, but I I, I enjoy it. I, I I love how he tries to feed into the sport. He knows at the end of the day, UFC is, and fighting in general is a selling sport. You are out there to sell your soul. You are you doing whatever you can to to sell fights and sell pay per views. And I admire sell the tickets. I, yeah, and I admire that. And he is he is awesome to watch. Um, he is undefeated, <laughs> Just, <laughs> according to Sean Oma. But, <laughs> yeah, I mean, he should put on some work against Pedro Munoz. Um, uh, but, yeah, um, the other fight, um, I'm, I'm a little upset the Misha Tate fight is canceled. That sucks. I would have liked to see her. It's been a while since she's fought. I'm curious to see uh, how she'd be looking after the long layoff. Robbie Lawler. Um, haven't seen him in a while, but he, ever since his, uh, his championship loss, he's just been downhill. Hasn't really been where he was at one point. Oh, uh, don't tell um, me we're on, uh, what's his name? We're on that track for Tyron Woodley. No, I mean, <laughs> he's just like, he just, w- <laughs> no, I'm um, Tyron Woodley. This, I mean, that is the largest fall from, I'll say this, I, I say it every time. That is the biggest fall from grace in the history of sports I've ever fucking seen. Um, but I'm actually really pumped for the Max Holloway fight. Um, I'm a big Max Holloway fan. That dude is a super nice guy. He streams on like Twitch and YouTube, no, YouTube all the time. He He's a super down-to-earth, just chill dude. And I wish him the best. Um, I'm rooting for him. I don't know if he wins. Alexander is a, is a, is a tough, tough fighter. Um, but I hope Max Holloway can go in there and uh, sneak a victory out. If he does win, it's going to go to decision. Um but uh, but yeah. Other than the Adesanya, which one are you excited for the O'Malley one as well? I mean, yeah. I mean, he, he's a fun, you know, fun guy to watch. Like I said, you put me on him, so like I'm like, you know, I didn't really hear about him. He has his weird tattoos. He has crazy hair. He looks like Takashi Six Nine or some shit. Yeah, like, uh, I did put you. Wait, fun. yeah, that was the first time you watching him was when he got. I don't remember. Yeah, I was like, who is this guy? Him. I don't know. Yeah. And then he just see so, next uh, thing, I mean, and then he's fighting like every three months, and he's like knockout, knockout, knockout. <laughs> So he looks like a fun guy, you know. I'll, I'll look out, definitely look out for him uh, uh, this Saturday. Uh, but we could transition over uh, yeah. to the NBA because we haven't talked. We've been off for a couple of weeks. Uh, we're in the middle of the NBA Finals. We have not talked about the NBA Finals. Uh, I don't know. I've seen. Obviously, it's been crowned. The Golden State Warriors have been already crowned. It's been a week already. Uh, Julian, what do you think overall of the series overall? Because I, I, I think I remember picking. I picked. Uh, I think I picked the Warriors in six, and they ended up doing it in six. Uh, I was a little scared. I was like, uh, should I pick them in six? Maybe they'll go to game seven. Anyways, it got, they pretty much, the Boston Celtics pretty, uh, pretty much got demolished. And Julian, I just want to get your thoughts on uh, the series overall. How, how you felt about the finals? Was this entertaining? Did it live up to your expectations? Yeah, I mean, pretty much, um, I think we all had, we all were picking Golden State to win it. I mean, yeah. it was just like, it was just an experienced team. They knew it. They've been there, done that. They were really strong coming into the finals. They had a, a big, long break. Um, I thought possibly game seven, when I was seeing that Boston was taking one, taking a road game, I was like, man, this could probably go to seven. But, I mean, Golden State does what Golden State does. This is, what, their fourth championship in eight years? Um, and then, what, five in eight years? Yeah. And been been to five finals in eight years, so I think they've only lost once, right? In the finals, that's a couple times. They lost to the Cavs and lost. Uh, they were down to the Cavs and. Uh, yeah, but when else did they lose? I think they only lost once in the finals. Um, I think they've been out of five five out of the last eight, but and then but they've won four out of the last eight. So yeah, uh, I mean, same old story that we've seen this whole decade. Just Golden State winning again. Um, I knew as soon as Celtics were going in there, I I just had a feeling. I was a little skeptical when I saw Golden State lost at home, but they stayed true, and then they end up winning in Boston in Game Six. So, yeah, I knew that home game for Game Seven was going to be no matter what they were going to win that. But uh, 
Yeah, I, that's what it, I it didn't end If they went early. to Game Seven, I assumed that they that Golden State was going to take it away if they, if they went to Game Seven, but they didn't. But I tell you what, that's got to be the weirdest feeling, is like winning a championship not in front of your home fans, on the road. No, that's got to yeah. be the best feeling. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's gotta be quiet uh, yeah. in that building. It's gonna be so quiet. All the haters, especially a team like okay, Boston. I just, Boston, I just feel like all having these, the environment. <laughs> All these championships they have, they've had since the 70s, before the NBA merger. We're not talking about that. We're only counting four of your championships, not all, whatever, 16 or whatever you want to name. Anyways. We only count so you ones go to a tough city like Boston. <laughs> you go in, okay. You go in <laughs> into Boston, which is a tough city to play in, in the playoffs, admittedly. As a Heat fan, I will say Boston's tough to go into. Um, you hear all the smack talking. You hear all the, you see all the people, the fans. Historic city to go into to go play um and you take it away you're on the road uh supposedly i heard they didn't even go out that night they, they stayed apparently they stayed in the hotel did the whole thing until they went back home to go party obviously on the west coast um so boston but i felt like boston had like i felt like they had the keys to unlock the championship they had the keys to unlock the the warriors but i think they felt normally we didn't really talk about it a lot um they were really bad on turnovers like they're not a really good dribbling team, like as far as like uh, movement of the ball. Like they, they get stuck in a lot of turnovers. They get stuck in. I think the last three games they had like a hundred. It was some ridiculous record that they broke. The last three games of the playoffs of the championship, tremendous turnovers, uh, which is bad because that's essentially giving up the ball. It's like, hey, here's a free chance. Here's a, I, I couldn't uh, pass it correctly or I couldn't dribble. You you stole the ball from me. Here's a free chance to get some points. Is what you're giving the other team. Um, so I felt Boston had they had the, I felt like they had the personnel to do to beat them. They could have won the championship, but this entire series, Steph Curry dragged the Golden State Warriors into a championship. You know I mean? Yeah, I think Boston had the formula. Like they had the they had the the style, the defense, the hard the hard nose play. Defense. Like one of the best. They, they had the, the ability to. Yeah, I mean, they had the ability to win. It's just like you couldn't capitalize on those games that you needed to. You couldn't capitalize on that home court advantage that you were able to get. And, I mean, we all know Golden State is a force, man. Steph Curry is a force. Like, you you got to take what you what he's going to give you, and you can't, you can't lose it because he will come back with a vengeance and get it right back. Like, <laughs> yeah. And you know this this season wasn't like one of Steph Curry's best years. He played injured a lot throughout the year, mm-hmm. and uh, but in the playoffs he had you know he had moments like he he rose to the occasion. Like I said, he dragged this Golden State Warriors team because Draymond was not playing good. Draymond, oh my god, did not have good games at the end. He had like three bad games at the end. Bro, when um, are they gonna get rid of him? <laughs> I've, oh no, like Draymond, Draymond's past it, bro. Like at least put him on the so. bench. I don't think Bro, so. this guy put He's up. He's still really good defensively. He's a he good was averaging like smart. five. I I get it. I get it. But no, that's you are an offense. A, you're talking about you, offense. You are a starter on an NBA team. You are the main big man. You cannot be putting up an average of five points. I don't. You, I, I, that is unacceptable, man. Like you cannot be a big yeah. man for a championship team and I putting agree. up five points. I'm not saying I'm not I'm gonna I'm not gonna be a Draymond stand and say like well, I, I, I want I want my center terrible. to at least be averaging fifteen <laughs> points. I want my center to at least be averaging fifteen points a game. At least. That's the least you can do. Clean up shots. Like, you but know, I he still contributes on other sides of the ball. Like, you know, he's still giving you uh you know, screens, he's giving you blocks, he's playing hard defensively, even though he'll kick you in the nuts. He does play hard. <laughs> Now, offensively, that's a different matter. Like, you know what I mean? And I felt like this entire series, I felt like Golden State had, they had a little deeper bench. They played a couple more players deeper than the, the Celtics. And they had more options. So when Steph was sitting, they had more options. You had Jordan Poole uh, coming in. Jordan Poole. Andrew Wigan. I also, yeah. Oh. Wiggins, Wiggins, Wiggins shined. Wiggins shines throughout the season. Yeah. We didn't talk a lot, a lot about Andrew Wiggins. But I, I think Wiggins got to shine without being like the number one guy or whatever. Uh, Jordan Poole, although he did give you stuff offensively, still a liability on defense. Um, But I think they're just a little bit deeper. Like I said, Steph carried this team. Draymond did not play well. You think Golden State was deeper than Boston? A little bit deeper. I think they had more options with 
Because if you look at if you look at the rotations that they had, Boston played like five, six guys mainly. The majority of the the, the minutes were even like five, six guys. And it's like this is these are our guys. This is like like college style. Like I these are they, our five guys. <laughs> we're just gonna run these guys until we. Do you think they got scared? Boston? No, I think they're just not experienced. They're not not as playoff experienced as the Golden State Warriors. They've been there before. Uh, I think Golden you, State you think you think they lack they, I think confidence that personal, confidence on their bench. Yeah, lack confidence. I think that's a bench, more of a coach or the thing, coach. Right? Yeah, yeah, the if, coach. The, the coach is the one that throws people in there, right? The, yeah, the coach I mean, calling the plays and saying you sit down, you rest, and then you go in. So I mean, you but think he was shout too out scared to Udoka to, because. No, I think Udoka. I think Udoka is a really good coach uh, in the league. He, you know, this is what his first, second year. Um, uh, he, he's a, he's a good guy. He, he's a smart guy. Makes adjustments on the fly. We saw it against the Miami Heat. So, um, coach is fine. Personnel. They definitely had the personnel to do it. It's just, um, I think in the end, turnovers like screwed them over. They had too many too, too many turnovers to uh, to. And you can't make those mistakes against a great player, against a playoff, you know, a, a, a playoff team like the Golden State Warriors who've been there before. They've done that. Like, the pressure is nothing. Pressure is nothing for the Golden State. So, um, I mean, that and they just – they couldn't put up points either. No. I mean, they – So – they, I mean, outside of game two and game three, they put up 88. They put up 97, 94, 90. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, versus and, gold versus yeah. Golden State. Golden State put up a hundred in every single game in this finals. So That's what I'm like, So they they couldn't. The turnovers are bad. You're basically giving free points to the other team. You give us so many turnovers. Oh, I mean, yeah. Golden turnovers to Golden State that could easily turn into a three. <laughs> That's what I'm like saying. You can't seconds. make mistakes in the playoffs. You can't make mistakes like this. Yeah. So, and to, uh, to, to be fair about- to Boston's credit, like to only hold Warriors. To like, what was it? Yeah, Warriors never got over 110, which I think is really good. I think holding Warriors to every single game being like at a hundred between 100 and like I think their highest scoring game was 107. So like, yeah, I mean, 100 to 107. That's pretty solid to hold Golden State to in the modern NBA. Like that's. That's pretty good, but the problem is, like we've been saying, like they they couldn't outscore it. They couldn't get over one ten, and the games that they did win, they got over one ten. They got one twenty, and they got one sixteen. And you got to make points. You got to convert on those kind of chances. So um, let's transition over to other NBA news because I think we're like in day one or day two of NBA free agency. We're doing this at the end of June. So, lots of NBA news going on. Uh, probably the biggest news. God damn, Gabe. Sorry. Drag race. Somebody's drag racing. Sorry. Such, Let's talk about NBA free point. agency. NBA free agency is going on right now as we speak. NBA free agency. Day one, day two. Uh, biggest news coming out. If you want to pull up uh, some of the news going on. Uh, the people we follow. If you want to follow at Real Fans Podcast on Twitter. Uh we just retweeted uh, Shams and Woj. If you want to pull up that, um, yeah, yeah, uh, that screen. So NBA news going on. Uh, Phoenix and Miami are among the two teams that Kevin Durant has on his wish list. Sources tell ESPN. So uh, pretty much KD is on the move. He's asked for a trade. Now the last couple of days we've heard a lot of shit from Kyrie Irving saying, "Oh, I want to be traded." He's like, "I want to be traded to the Knicks. I want to be traded to whatever 76ers. Which would be insane because if you're Kyrie Irving, you just trade away James Harden. Why would you want to go to the 76ers to <laughs> yeah. play with James Harden? That's a weird thing. He also said he wanted to be traded or whatever. So Kyrie is doing his own thing. He's doing some, I don't know, psychological uh, experiment on trading the Knicks or whatever. But KD has officially asked today to be traded. And the two teams are Phoenix and uh, Miami is what he asked to be traded for. Obviously, we have Woj up here. If you're following Woj on Twitter... Uh, Kevin Durant and Kyrie have had no contact with the franchise after Kyrie opted into his deal on Monday. So, um, Julian, I don't know how you feel about this in general. I don't know how you feel about the Nets experiment. You know, they had KD, you had Kyrie, you had James Harden. Obviously, we had transition. Ben Simmons got traded. 
And now Kyrie's opting in. Katie's asking for a trade. How do you feel in general about uh, the net situation in Brooklyn? The GM absolutely fumbled the bag. I mean, it's just terrible. Like, what a what a failed experiment. Like, the obviously like they could have won that last year with, when the Bucks won. It was they. I think it was Game Seven. It went to, and it was a really close Game Seven. Um. But I mean, this year was just bad. I mean, we get that Kyrie couldn't play um, for a lot of the games, uh, so that 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 didn't help. And then you trade James Harden, and then you get the the NBA's homeless man, which is Ben Simmons, who ceases to never play. Didn't play at all this season. Pretty much, is he hurt? Is he not hurt? Who knows? Um, it was just. It seems like it's just bad on all parts, like the way the Nets – and then it just seems like they're just calling it quits. Like, obviously, nobody wants to be there anymore. Um, and now you're stuck with Ben Simmons somehow. So I I get why Kevin Durant wants to leave. He's probably frustrated. He probably no longer wants to play with Kyrie. Um, obviously, James Harden left. Clearly, you have no faith in Ben Simmons um, and the rest of the supporting cast on the team – so Kevin Durant obviously wants to be with a team where he has support and he has help. Um, I think he had that little bit of taste of it when he went to Golden State for those couple of years. And I think he wants that again He because I, I think he likes having that support, kind of like even in OKC where he did with Russell Westbrook. Like the two of them just bounce off each other really well. Um, and also when Harden was the sixth man of the year that year. Um, but yeah, I don't. I don't see the the heat, man. I don't see him going to the heat. I just, I don't know if the heat will want him. Like as a heat, I mean, me as a heat fan, I mean, obviously, I don't know how I feel about it. Like, I, obviously I would take him, but I don't know if I would go above and beyond and do whatever I can to get him. I think if you can get him and you come up with a nice deal, where you're not losing too many players and losing too much, um, then get them, of course. But if it means like selling your soul and getting rid of like Jimmy Butler and whatever, like I don't like that. I wouldn't do it. You know. Oh, Gabe, we lost you. Cut. I Gabe cut out for a second, but he's back now. What were your thoughts, Gabe, of what I said? Um, generally, because you were talking about uh, the KD trade, um, I think uh, there there was some news that came out that actually um, because there's some weird thing where you get if you're a player that gets an extension and you hit some benchmarks, whatever, you become a designated player. And when you trade, so Ben Simmons got traded from Philly to New, uh, to the Nets. Uh, he's a designated player that's been traded already. So uh, if there's a trade to be had with if KD is available, as he says. Um, uh, Idris Adebayo cannot go because he's also uh, a designated player as well because he extended with the Miami Heat. So um, if there's a trade for KD to Miami, it cannot be involved with uh, Bam Adebayo unless there's a third team. So if there's a straight-up trade between KD and Bam Adebayo, they can go straight through unless there's a third team to be involved. Um, if you're involved, if you're the Miami Heat and you want to get involved with a, a KD trade, obviously you're going to have to give up pieces. I still think, because right now, um, P.J. Tucker, who has a connection with KD, because P.J. Tucker went to Texas. I think they went to the University of Texas, or they're from Texas or whatever. They went to the same school, maybe at the same time, but they went to the same school. I think they played with each other for like one or two years. Um, so they have a connection there. So I think the Miami Heat, one of the things, uh, if you want to get KD, I think you're going to have his friend there, right? Like That's one of the, the main things, right? Because we had to put three... We were because saying too, like Bosch, PJ, LeBron, was... and Wade were all friends. So if you want to, if you want to get a KD, that means you're, you're trying to secure PJ. Which I don't know if PJ's waiting on. Bro, KD PJ's no boss to come though. through. But listen, you get PJ. PJ's not gonna. PJ's like 38 years old. The guy's <laughs> old as fuck. Yeah. But if if him staying in Miami means you get to get Kyrie, uh, sorry, not Kyrie, Kevin Durant, then you keep PJ. Uh, I think he, PJ has been holding out so far. It's, it, there's a holdout on PJ, um, but now that now that KD has announced that he's 
willing to go, like willing to be traded, and, and the two teams are Phoenix or uh, Miami, bro, do whatever you can to get uh, uh, Kevin Durant. I think it's been. See, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not on the boat where do whatever you can. I'm like, if you can get it and it's a good deal, and you're not losing too much, do it. I like, like what? What do you give up? What what is worth giving? You gotta up? give up a lot. You gotta give up a lot of money. So I think I'm okay with I'm moving kinda, Hero, and I said that. I, I said that I'm, I'm yeah, perfectly I'm okay, okay yeah. moving Hero right off the six man of the year. Move him and whatever shit. Move PJ Tucker, but like, why keep him? Like, I just feel like he's another Haslam that's just like just there to be there. And I feel like you need an actual player at that position. You need an actual player. That's the thing. If, if you want Kevin Durant, I think you keep his friend. I think they want to play together. I think they're no, friends. if you want Off Kevin Durant, you school. keep Jimmy Butler. You don't. No one gives a fuck about PJ Tucker. I'm sorry. Like, I don't think Butler's gonna leave though. I don't think Butler's, Butler's not leaving. leaving. They're not like, moving. I think, yeah. Gapes, you sound. You can't. Can you sound yeah, any more Texas? <laughs> a lot of a lot of drag racing over here. You know, but I mean, like, stuff. I don't like. I don't care to have PJ Tucker. I just feel like he's just another Haslam. It's just a guy who can't contribute. And it's too old, and I, I don't know, man. Like, I, like I said, that I'm okay with trading a uh, hero. I think you should. I think while you, you sell him high, because I think he's just wildly inconsistent. He's inconsistent, and he gets hurt a lot. And I, like I said, I'm all for KD coming if K, if you can get the right deal. But like, if I, I, I would just hate to see them get rid of too much for him because i don't know how well he'll fit per se like i don't know as far as as far as the brooklyn nets i think this is like an experiment that went failed obviously so much hype going into the season right it was going to be kd james harden kyrie irving so much hype going into the season and none of it like manifested right because uh kd was hurt for a little bit james harden was hurt for a little bit kyrie since he's not vaccinated not gonna play he's only gonna play away games not gonna play home games um, there's been a lot of. Uh, well, he didn't say that. I think they he said that. he couldn't. <laughs> well, I mean, at the time it was a lot. We're in the middle of the pandemic, and New York didn't allow. If you had to, if you want to be indoors, you had to be vaccinated, or whatever. And but then eventually they just changed that. Um, so Kyrie, that's the thing. Do you think Kyrie could still like? I, I think Kyrie is still a, a good player. He can still contribute on the field. It's just, do you want to get? Do you want the headache of all the shit that's off the field? No. All his like. Wusa burning sage. Do you want the fucking the weird? I don't think he of, cares enough. I don't like. I do don't you, think yeah. he he's not hungry. He he hasn't really been since I would arguably say before LeBron got to Cleveland. That was the last time I felt like you saw Kyrie and he was like he was hungry, like he was balling, like he was doing whatever it took to win. And it seems like the moment he got that championship, it was just like. It, he was just non-existent. And I think that's, I mean, this is a reoccurring theme. No one else is giving Kyrie a chance to be the number one guy. Like, I think it, it's over after what happened in Boston and now what's happened in Brooklyn. And this is goes beyond the, the COVID thing. I mean, like, it's just, he, I don't think he cares. And if you're going to have a guy who's going to be your number one guy, you're going to pay him all this money and he's supposed to be the leader of your team. He has to act like a leader. And I think the, Kyrie will be wherever he goes. He's going to be a role player, but I would not bank on him. Like, like what? What? Obviously, he was hurt, but like, he is a tremendous talent. And I think if he was in that series against the Bucks um, last year, they possibly go to the finals. I mean, what do you think? Like, I think they do. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to disagree with you. Like I. You say he's he's a good player to have. He's a starter. Like he's very uh, dynamic. I think he still has he has a skill. Wait, to what play part do you disagree? Uh, like you, you're saying, like oh, he, he uh, the, like he was like a bench player. No, 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 no. I never, idea. I never, I never said he's a bench player. I said he's a support character for a main character. Like I, I you're not gonna build it. I think his. I think no team is gonna want to build around Kyrie anymore. I think it's on. I think it's over. Would you, would you trust? Would desperate you desperate? Well, I think teams that are desperate. Will. What team is? Do I desperate? think Miami's desperate enough? No. I, who I don't would think be desperate, desperate like a Clippers? 
Like, I mean, who? Any team that's sorry, so yeah, like a Clippers, like a Suns, like a uh, some team that's close but not, you know, they don't have the. the I don't over, know if the Suns uh, are desperate. I think that Suns need somebody. I don't know if they're desperate though. Man, I heard Booker's leaving, so like <laughs> Booker's leaving, you got Booker, Chris Paul's old if, as fuck. Booker, yeah, <laughs> That's I mean, I'm yeah, Booker leave <sighs> one and I don't think he wants to go to a team where he's the number one guy. I don't think he wants to, and I think any team that tries to do it, it's just not gonna work. I just think it's not gonna work. He has to go to a team with an established presence that they're gonna go in there and you know, maybe maybe uh maybe like a, a Portland. You, you, he doesn't have to be like the. I know Lillard and him are kind of the same guy, though. That's the problem. Like I don't, I can't think of at the top of my head where he could go. All right. That would let's, maybe let's, like let's a, bring him back to the next Dallas. Day. Oh yeah, Dallas? but we're talking about trades, though. It's possible. All right, we're talking about trades. Okay, we're in the middle of free agency trades. Uh, but just speaking about <clears> the Nets <throat> specifically, talking about Kyrie, because um, Kyrie was also on the table, right? Because he he came kind of came out last week and he's like, oh, I want to be traded. Whatever to the Knicks to the whatever whatever team. To I think it's, we're talking about and Durant. But we switched to Kyrie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but I'm just talking about the Nets and drunk. I'm talking about yeah, like yeah. Kyrie, KD. Like, uh, like I don't feel like uh, you know, especially now that it comes out that KD wants to be traded. I don't feel like KD. He doesn't have any attachment to the Nets. Like, what is what is his connection to oh, the Nets? He doesn't care. York, They've done nothing. Brooklyn. But he, yeah, I mean, he has he has no allegiance to to the Nets. And why? At, but now at you this say. Point, you're going to roll in with what Ben Ben Simmons and a Kyrie who's there half the time? Like, no. You already saw what happened. They got Was yeah. it swept? They got swept by Boston? Was it Was that what it was? Yeah, they got that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that was his final straw. He's like, I'm I'm out. I think the moment they got swept, he's like, fuck this. Like I I I, I totally see that happening. And that's a big thing. They they had this thing where they're going to have like said, James Harden is going to be KD, James Harden and Kyrie. They were supposed to dominate the East. Everybody could talk about the Nets. All they talk about is the New York bias, okay? All they talk about is the fucking New York Nets. They haven't done shit since, uh, uh, whatever, since they moved from. Look, I'll say this. Um, on paper, they were supposed the to, on paper, they were supposed to be good. But, I mean, can you say that personality and the mentality of Ky- and having a Kyrie and a James Harden wasn't like a recipe for disaster? I mean, we saw what happened in Houston. A lot of and then we saw what happened in Boston. Kevin Durant's a stand-up dude, and you can tell his goal in life is to be the greatest basketball player ever. He'll do whatever it takes to win, and I admire that about KD. He'll go wherever, he'll do whatever. It's like as long as I win and I'm looked at as one of the best players to ever live, he'll do whatever he can. And then, I mean, it. look at the players you brought in. I mean, yeah, they're great talents, but they have team issues. They have personality issues yeah. with Kyrie and Dub, James Harden. And I think one of the oh, – so, so obviously they get traded or whatever. I think one of the weirdest things was at the end of the season, obviously the, net get, the Nets get bounced uh, out of the playoffs. And you see this this post-conference uh, uh, press presser with all the presses around. And KD and Kyrie are saying like, oh, we're happy to work with the management to, uh, you know, get the ball rolling that we can, you know. I'm, I'm happy. Kyrie is basically like, oh, I'm happy to just manage and, you know, work with the GMs to get the next. So he's like very like in on the Nets. But then, like last week, we said, "Oh, I want to be traded to the Knicks or whatever." He wants to be traded to the 76ers or something. He just claims that he wants to be traded. So it's like, at the end of the year, you said one thing. You're like, "Oh, I'm all in on the Nets. We're we're going to work on make a better team." Then last week, you say, "Oh, I want to be traded to the Knicks." And then this week, you resign your option to go back with the Nets. It's like, dude, why are you messing around? Like you're just saying shit to be fluffy. If you want to get a deal, you want to get money. That's fine. I feel like he he tries to act like he doesn't want attention, but I think all he wants is attention. Yeah. He just gives me that that vibe. He he tries to pose like he doesn't want attention, but everything you do is the opposite of what you're actually saying. You're you're acting like somebody who wants all the attention in the world. So that's what I'm saying. Like Kyrie, the basketball player, I would love to have his skill set. I would love to have him contribute to the team. Kyrie, the the off-the-court shit. I, I want nothing to do with it. Like I would hate if he was on my team. I would hate him. All these cryptic tweets, these weird. It's strange. He's a strange dude. And it's one. Still and the thing is, basketball. he's healthy enough to contribute. But like, do you want to deal with the sideshow? Do you want? And the thing is, that? too. Yeah. And the sideshow is is so much of a turnoff that it's like, will you even actually get him? That's the problem, too. It's like, 
are you even going to get what you pay for out of them? Boston clearly yeah. didn't. New York clearly didn't. Obviously, there was other reasons that caused him not to play as much as he did in New York. But like, still, like this was problems for years now, and it's you're like, fed into his ego. You fed into the ego, and you now you have to deal with the ego. And it's um, a shame because so, he is like, uh, ridiculously good. He 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 is so good. Like when he's playing, he could be the best. I get. I mean, he plays like a point guard, flex shooting guard kind of, right? I mean, yeah. Right. So I think we, you know, we talked about the Nets enough. Uh, we brought up James Harden, but we didn't talk about the news from James Harden because that came out a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I think we have the post from that. Retweeted from our account, Real Fans Podcast on Twitter. If you guys want to follow us, uh, that's where we get all our posts. We just keep track of everything there. Um, Shams Charnia tweets that the 76ers James Harden is declining his 47 million player option because he's interested in uh, renegotiating to get more flexibility for the 76ers. As tweeted by Shams Charania yesterday, update later today because Shams and Woes, they're going off today because, it's like I said, it's free agency uh, in the NBA. Um, Julian, in general, like, how do you feel? Like, I think James Harden for a long time, obviously he was, like, one of the ghosts get out of New uh, Brooklyn, the Brooklyn Nets. And uh, I think uh, he's found his partner in Joel Embiid. Obviously, they only played like half season, whatever. But it looks like the 76ers are trying to bolster their roster. But it's kind of weird because Joel Embiid, during the playoffs, when the Miami Heat were playing, was tweeting stuff at Jimmy Butler saying, you know, like, oh, I would like to uh, – that uh, Jimmy Butler needs help. Uh, Jimmy Butler, you know, it was kind of hinting at like, oh, yo, I should go to I should go to Miami kind of thing. Um, so I think it's a good sign in general with uh, – James Harden saying he's going to renegotiate, like because he, he has this big bloated contract. He's like, oh, I'm not going to do the player option. I just renegotiate, try to get better help with the 76ers. But how do you think, like in general, this helps the 76ers? Do you think this makes them better? Uh, do you see people trying to flood themselves or uh, get over to 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 Philly? Um, I will say I'm surprised. Just doesn't seem like a James Harden thing to do. Um, I, I'm a little surprised. Uh, this there, it's also in a way too. I think he's also kind of saying that yeah, the Phillies like Philly's looking for another guy. Um, they they're a team that's always been good, but they just never had enough pieces. Um, they never could get it make it click in the playoffs. Um, when when Joel Embiid came back from his face injury, um, against the Heat, man, for a moment there they looked scary. I was like, holy shit, are they going to like knock out the heat for a second? But then obviously the heat came in and flexed their muscles in. Like, nah, I mean, we're way deeper than you guys. So I think I think we might be gearing up to see a lot of uh, f- moves for Philly because uh, they must have re- told him something to be like, hey, like, look, you got a really bloated contract. I think we could do s- – like we already got some people on our radar. Like if you opt out of, if you really want to win a title, I think we can get us over that edge. And I think they clearly talked to him to do it because otherwise he would just took his money and ran if they weren't going to do anything. But obviously I think Philly, the front office there is tired of just being regular season warriors and uh, not doing anything when it comes to the playoffs. So we might see something soon who they get. I don't, I could honestly see them kind of taking that Boston Miami route, just like not getting a whole lot of superstars, but just backloading it with a lot of depth and bench and role players. And then maybe you get like, we've talked about um, what we're going to talk about in a second, uh, like a Bradley Beal, somebody in there. Um, Obviously Harden plays best. I think when he is the main focus and, um, and then Joel Embiid, he is such a talent. He's probably the best and between him and Anthony Davis is like the best big man in the league. So, um, he, he occupies his space while Harden occupies the rest of it. So, yeah, I mean, we'll see. I, but I am surprised to say the least. Um, I am kind of surprised because what, from what I hear about James Harden is like, you know, he's like, I want to win, but he's like also a guy like I want to get paid and you know, his exactly. Golf, 
his off the court reputation is like this guy just goes to strip clubs. He just he's having fun. He's doing his own thing. You you see him. He's high as fuck in whatever in France or in the Maldives or wherever the fuck he was high as hell in Paris. Uh, uh, so like it's like uh, and from what I hear people talk about, it's like yo, uh, you know, he definitely has like pure talent. Like maybe in his younger age where he was able to rely just on. His talent alone is kind of like an Allen Iverson kind of thing where he just goes into, you know, when it comes to basketball, straight up basketball, like you know about drills and whatever, like he's fine with it. Like great dribble, shoot off the three, whatever. Um, but when it comes off the court, like the preparation, off season, off the court things, like his mind is elsewhere, right? And we saw like this season, there was a definitely an NBA change where like all the rules where he used to get all those calls where he the fake pump by the three and he would get all those fall calls. NBA was like, shut that shit down. We're not, we're not making any of those calls anymore. You're not getting any, any of those free, uh, free throws. So definitely, that affected him. His age has affected him. Uh, and I feel like, again, it's, it's like a, for me, it's like another Kyrie situation. It's like, yes, you're very good at basketball. You facilitate. You score uh, offensively. Um, you play well, but do you have like the right mindset? Like is your mind into the game? Like it, it is the sideshow. Like, is it all about basketball? Like on the team? Like, and there was a lot of rumors that we had, we talked about earlier. Like, uh, there was a rumor that Ty, uh, Tyler Hero was going to get traded while James Harden was in Houston, that Tyler Hero for James Harden and some other stuff. And obviously that didn't go through because James Harden went to New York, whatever. Um, and I was actually constantly like, would I want James Harden on my team? I was like, yes productive he's gonna give you numbers but do you want the shit show of him living in miami if him oh, this guy God, had a yeah of, him this guy had a reputation of like he had a game in la he'll play the whatever the lakers or the clippers this guy would fly into las vegas he, w- he wouldn't go to la to go sit in the hotel or whatever this guy would go fly to las vegas go play a game then go back to las vegas or some shit, shit like that like his mind like his mindset is like not about he says it about winning. He says it about getting paid and winning. But it's like, do you want to deal with like the guys? Like, all right, this guy is just—he's a superstar. He his his he's a rock star. He's living a rock star life. You really want Dennis that on team in the playoffs? Yeah, he's a Dennis Rodman. So, um, except not as I crazy. feel like. <laughs> so as far as as far as him opting out of his player option, it's a surprise to me. A complete surprise. Um, and we'll see. Like, I, I don't have high hopes for James Harden. Obviously, he's going to be playing for the 76ers. That's my uh, enemy in, in the East. That's a, one team that we got to watch out for as long as Joel Embiid's there. So, uh, we'll see. We'll see. He said, you know I mean? It, it's, it's fine to talk. It's fine to say, yes, I'm going to concentrate. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to get on the gym. Uh, you know, well, I'm gonna speaking of that, he did. Traded. I mean, did you <laughs> see that, though? He got recently, what? he got yoked. I saw something going around. That's like, great. Checked. That's great. Uh-huh. Talk to me and talk to me in March. You know, talk to me in the <laughs> put on a, like, yeah, That's great. Now it's summertime. There's no, there's no basketball being played. Yeah. So he did. He did put great. on a fat suit though nice. for the for the Rockets just to get traded. And to like traded. literally, <laughs> literally, like two weeks later, this man like dropped twenty pounds somehow. <laughs> so it sounds good. It sounds good because guess what? There's no basketball being played. There's no tough. You're not in a tough series. You're not traveling. He's probably at his house. You know, he's doing whatever the fuck he wants. That's great. It's off season. Do whatever you want. Take vacation. But are you going to be off season during the season? You know what I mean, like, are you going to be freestyling? Like, oh, I'm just going to go. You know, I'm gonna go to Atlanta. I'm gonna go to uh, Magic City. You know, get the chicken wings. I don't know. Anyways, uh, but let's let's transition over to. I, I, we also have. I was going to uh, say okay. real quick. I do think this drops a team out of the Eastern Conference like title race. Who? If if the. If this trade goes through, which is most likely, you know, an NBA if a player wants to get traded, they pretty much get traded. Um, and Kyrie, which one? Uh, the Nets. Yeah, I mean, I think you're you're going to lose another contender, uh, pretty oh, much. If KD gets traded, yeah, if KD and Kyrie leave. Like the East is you're, that's one less team. That's you know, granted they didn't play this well this season, um, but it's still one less team that's gonna make it pretty competitive but you know when one goes down another one takes its place so we'll see maybe uh maybe the hawks can do something cool who knows <laughs> but uh yeah let's move on to the next player like you're saying um so the washington wizards star bradley beal the man who's been 
hidden away in a dungeon, the NBA dungeon <laughs> that is the Washington Wizards. Um, his talent's not being seen um, for yeah. his entire 10 year career. Somehow he never complained. He, he stayed the course. Um, he got help for one season <laughs> with the, not even one season. That. He got, he got help for half a he had season. John Wall with him. It was for, for a minute. It was John Wall. Yeah. And, and, and then Peter for a minute, and then he had a half a season with Russell Westbrook that almost got him. I think they did go to the playoffs, actually. I think they squeezed in right at the end. Um, but, man, he is still 29, which is crazy to think. He's still got a whole lot of years left. But, yeah, he declined his uh, $36 million option for the 2022-2023 season. Um, so, from what it looks like, from what Ports are saying, he has two options right now. Um he will either sign a five-year max contract to remain in Washington or elect to go somewhere else for a four-year max a contract. Four year. Yeah. The, that, um, that is the most he can sign with another team. And uh, so Bradley Beal has been one of these guys, just like kind of like Victor Oladipo. For the, I'm talking about the perspective of Miami. Victor Oladipo has been long talks about coming to Miami, years before I even came, like two years, two, three, four, five years. Bradley Beal has been another guy, like, in the rumors, like, oh, they're trying to get Bradley Beal, trying to trade for Bradley Beal, or trying to see whatever. Um, obviously, Bradley Beal has, the last time he played, let me pull up his stats, because i gotta, I got to be statistically correct. All right, He's been so active. I have the, the stats right now. last game he played now. was January 29th of this year. The last time he played, January 29th. So he didn't even see a playoff. Not that the Washington Wizards were playoff bound. but So he's been off for, like, pretty much six, seven months not opting in. So obviously it's probably looking into going to another team. Now he signs with another team for a max. I don't know if that's worth it. Like, I don't know if he's worth a max because I haven't seen him play a lot of games. He played 40 games last season. Like I said, and he's missed essentially the last half of it. He, I, I don't know what player I'm getting. And this is the same way I felt about Oladipo with uh, Victor Oladipo with uh, him coming in. He essentially missed two years of basketball or once the heat signed him. I think it's a little bit different. I see but. Um, Bradley Beal, I don't think he's worth a max deal. If you can get Bradley Beal on a discount, like a minimum, I would be interested in getting Bradley Beal. Bradley Beal on max for what, four or five years? Like, I'm I'm good. I'm good. Because I, I don't know what, what product I'm getting. If you're going to get signed for, you don't sign for like two years. When I get a max for like two years, I would consider it. If a max for four years, you haven't played in six months, you've been hurt. I'm good. I'm good. I, I agree. I don't know how you. How do, what, what are your thoughts on Bradley Bill? I mean, I pretty much. I entirely agree with you. Um, I do think he's good, man. I, I think he's really good. Um, I don't know. All right, so I'm looking from a Heat perspective as a Heat fan. As a Heat fan, you're not going to give him four years max. I could see another team doing that. Um, maybe a Phoenix. I can see another team doing that. I don't know. Where, de- depending on where he wants to go, um, will determine if he gets a four year max. But I do see if he goes to a competitive team, I see like a two year max, like you were saying, or like a short, like a shorter contract, but maybe a lot of money. Um, he's talented, man. I think he's really good. Um, I get that he was injured. Um, I'm not sure what the injury was again, I forgot. Um, Trying to see if it says it real, real quick, but I mean, for the most part, he had a wrist injury. So, I mean, that's a little scary for a basketball player to have a wrist injury. But um, I don't know, man. I, with the modern with modern medicine, I mean, we've seen players come from worse stuff and uh, perform like they were never injured. Um, I think over the past few years, we've seen we we've seen a lot of NBA players come back from injuries and not look the same. I think Oladipo is a, is a, a special case because he was gone for a very long time. Um, he's I don't know when Bradley Bill's supposed to come back. I'm assuming he might be ready by the end of the season. He got I mean, be by the beginning, the by, by, the, by the start months. of the season. Yeah. yeah. So And it's a wrist injury. So, um, yeah. Uh, he's definitely going to go to a winning team. Um this just screams like a Miami Heat pickup. Like I didn't, I didn't say, I didn't say Kevin Durant. 
Um, I just, I don't know. I just don't see it. I, I, I really don't. But Bradley Beal screams like a Miami Heat addition. He fits the culture. He will slot in perfectly. Um, I think you can trade Hero for him. I don't think he would – well, you won't have to trade anything because he'd be a free agent. So you wouldn't have to trade anything for him. You just got to have the cap space for him, which you're probably going to have to offload some guys. Um, I would be perfectly fine if you offloaded Duncan Robinson and we got uh, to save up some money. And uh, – to pick up Bradley Beal. I think he offers way more. He's been consistent his entire career. He just he just plays ball, and I could totally see. And that's what the Heat needed. They needed a consistent shooting guard. I, like, I think JoJo said this too. They needed a consistent shooting guard, and um, I still think you need somebody else to take that P.J. Tucker spot, um, like that number four power forward kind of spot, spot next to Bam. But I think he'll slot in perfectly, and I think you can make space for him if it means, you know, offloading some players to free up some space. I say do it. If you need to offload Duncan or trade him away to free up space, do it. If you need to offload Tyler Hero or trade him away, do it. Obviously, you just you wouldn't offload him. You just you you, you wouldn't just drop him, but you, you want to you, you would want to trade them away, get some, maybe some picks or something out of it. Maybe some more role players or cheaper, more value. But yeah, I say, I say the heat should really go after him. And I think they are. Yeah. And that, that's the crazy thing. Like I told you guys at the end of this, uh, the heat season, I was like, don't be surprised if Duncan goes, don't be surprised if Tyler goes, don't be surprised if Bam goes, because I expect the, the, I mean, to make moves. Now, I don't know about guys, Bam. You know, when it comes to I don't Asians, know. Like, they're not very deep in the in the big man department, and Bam's a really good big man. I don't see that happening, but you can get another shooting guard and a small forward. Yeah. So we'll see. Like like I said, this is the beginning of free agency. I think we're in day one of free agency. We're, we're recording here at the end of June. So uh, we'll see. There'll definitely be more news. We're going to keep all the uh, attention on Shams and Woj for our NBA news. And if you need that, Real Fans Podcast on Twitter. At Real Fans Podcast, Gabe Gabe runs uh, Julian, Twitter. Yeah, I'm on, I'm on the Twitter. So, I try to tweet so if you message us on Twitter, back. that's Gabe. There you go. You would definitely get a follow back. You would definitely get a follow back. Looking for all our people to follow us. Where where can they follow us, Julian? Tell them where, where they can follow us if you're not on Twitter. You already said Twitter. Um, obviously, we're on we're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. We're on Instagram. Um, and we're on anywhere you get podcasts: Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts. Um, pocket fm whatever you want we're on it um if you are in those podcasting platforms please leave a review and if you're on all our other social medias please like the content i'd be greatly appreciated or subscribe to our youtube channel that would be great as well definitely appreciate all downloads all the views all the subscriptions we appreciate it on youtube like i said follow us on all the things facebook and twitter we appreciate that. We'll see you next week. Hopefully, we'll have more UFC news, more NFL news, more NBA news. We'll bring it back next week. Hopefully, we'll have JoJo. Next week, we'll be back. Real Fast Podcast right here where you can see it. We'll see you all next week. Peace. Peace.